This week on Brewpeg we start clearing out the mess in the engine room by fitting the parts that are laying all around to the engine, such as the air filter, we sort out the alignment on the engine, and I figure it's time to start massaging the exhaust to fit the new engine. Brewpeg was a sunken fishing trawler that's been brought back to life with the help of volunteers and funded by our Patreons, community and supporters. She'll be crewed by passionate people from around the world. If you'd like to be involved and support the project, please consider joining us on Patreon or subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Last week we discovered the adapter wasn't quite perfect, so we bolted it all back up to the engine and then we put the dial gauge on the face of it and started spinning it around so we could figure out how not perfect it was. It was quite far out, so we had to get that fixed and that was the reason why we were having so much trouble before. So we put the adapter on the lathe, we were able to dial it in using the dial gauge, you can see here, we got it spinning pretty accurate and then we remachined the face, so both faces, both front face and back face are perfectly true to each other. So it's time to start our final alignment. We've got our adapter, we've cleaned out every thread, we've gone through with brake clean and made this thing as spotless as we can. Now we're going through, our bolts are prepped. We're gonna be using medium Loctite uh, when we put all of this together for a couple of reasons. Not so much to hold it, we've got big spring washers that'll do the job of holding these things tight. Um, but we spoke with Daniel, one of our sort of advisors, I suppose you could say on the project. He does a lot of um, engineering mechanical advice for us. Um, he was saying use medium Loctite, medium strength Loctite, not so much to hold it, but more just to keep rust out of the threads. So when we do everything up and, and the boat's in operation and we're at sea and whatever, we can get them basically undone again because the threads are not going to deteriorate over time. So that's the plan. We're going to be putting these together, uh, Loctiting them in, and we need to crank this up to 540 foot pound. Uh, that's the um, M20 by 1.5 thread. That's the um, and it's a 10.9 high tensile bolt. So that's the torque spec we've got to go to. I don't know if we're going to get to that. We'll probably get it as tight as we can and, and leave it there. The adapter bolts onto the output flange on the gearbox, and the bolts come from the gearbox side, and they work through the output Very flange on the gearbox, and they thread into the adapter. And you can see here we're spinning it around. Now I'm putting in the one inch bolts that go from the prop shaft through into the adapter itself. It allows me to get a bar like this. I lock it up on the two bolts you can see here. And that jams on the new engine bed so that it essentially stops the gearbox from turning around, acts like a brake. I can get a spanner onto the new bolts and start tightening them up. So the old spanner didn't really work. We could hook it in like that, but it just felt terrifying trying to haul on it. And then it just seemed to fit really well. We can haul on that like crazy now. Click, click. Right, that's done, bit of a workout, but now it's time to get the dial gauge in and figure out how far away from aligned we are. So we've just put the dial gauge here on this face here and spun the gearbox around um, 360. And we've got four thou of run out on that face. Now that's as good as we're ever gonna get it because there's two thou max on this side and two thou max run out on this side. We couldn't true it up perfect on the lathe. It was as good as we could get it basically. Um, we had a few goes at it and that was, that was as good as we could do. Um, so this is going to be fourth hour out in total across that face, which is still within the acceptable limits, but it's sort of, it's disappointing, but um, that's just what we're going to have to accept. One day, one day our ultimate would be to upgrade these to flex mounts and to put a flex coupling in here. Um, but for now, we're not, we're solid mounted, which is how the boat's been for the last 50 years. Um, and that's kind of why we left it like that, because it's so bulletproof and simple. But um, that's one of the downsides, you've got to have everything machined absolutely perfect to be able to do that. Now what we need to do, now that we know that this is all tight and lovely, is we need to bring this up to the flange face. The reason we want to have a very, very slight gap between them is we don't want them interfering with each other. If one of them's resting on the other or doing anything, it'll screw up the measurements. So by having that slight gap means that you can get filler gauges in there and know that you're basically measuring the distance and not measuring any interference between them. It's been a while since we updated you on the construction that's happening just down the road from us. This is a wharf that they're building. They've knocked all of the coffer dams into the ground and now they're starting on all of the excavation sides of things. They're moving a lot of dirt around at the moment. We don't really know much more than what we can physically see here, but it's pretty impressive to see some of the work that they're doing. And then while we're up there, we thought we'd give you a look at one of our favourite haunts to go in the kayak.
Right, the preliminary work's done. It's time to start aligning it. And as the Backstreet Boys famously once said, this is how we do it. The old familiar process, dial gauge on the side, and we've been swapping from left to right and top to bottom with the dial gauge. We're about to jump in with our feeler gauges and see how far we are face to face. Oops, more. So 23 out, Loose. Very close, a good place to start. So we loose at the bottom, put tight at the top, and we have to come up. Alright, so we're zeroed out. Let's spin it and see where we're at. It's 30. I think whatever we did, we made it worse. So after that didn't work, back to the feeler gauges. Back to the feeler gauges. Dreaded feeler gauges. I fucked it up. I'm gonna start again. I think this might be the moment of the final alignment. For we'll, the tenth time. We'll see. Yeah, after day nine, we won't put up with too much more unalignment. So that's that's fine. That's one thou, and the other, and it's four thou out top to bottom. Quite far off. Okay. It's not quite the final alignment. Don't say anything. <laughs> okay, this is definitely going to be the last time we align it. Don't say anything. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. You keep going. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. How far are we at top bottom? Point nine. Okay, fourth hour. Alright. Still tight at the top? Yep, still tight at the top. We're on the final alignment, we're like minutes away from it. Since three days ago. Are you serious or are you taking the first? Both. <laughs> we're very close, extremely close, closer than we've ever been before. Okay, so right now it's basically like that. If this is the gearbox flange, this is the there you go, face you. If this is the prop flange, this is the gearbox flange, it's not an angle like that. It's Just a bit exaggerated. Exactly. Fourth hour difference, basically, is what we've measured at. We're pretty even side to side. Top to bottom, we're fourth hour smaller at the top than we are at the bottom. Um, and we're fourth hour like that, if that makes sense. So the prop shaft is low compared to the gearbox. So we have to, we have to drop the engine, which exasperates that there. So we have to try and drop the engine front and back evenly to bring it down and then sort of rotate the engine down at the front and up at the back if that makes sense to make it even so it's a bit of a fart around to get it accurate and four sour means what in millimeters uh 0.1 roughly it's roughly 0 0.025 mil per thou thou's just easier because it's whole numbers but but millimeters is um it's 0 0.1 of a millimeter and where does it have to be I, I don't really want it any worse than 0 0.05. I prefer it way better than that, but that's that's my line of sand. I don't want it worse than that. Okay, should we should we try to drop the gearbox down to the right level and then drop the front too. Drop the front quite quite dramatically. Yep. Done. So we are within one thou or 0 0.03 side to side. We're at zero top to bottom, so it's perfect top to bottom. With feeler gauges, we're within uh, one thou all the way around, so we're not going to get that any better than that, so we're calling that done. So the motor's now aligned. The next step is to go through and build the little dams around each of the mounts and start putting the chock fast in. So obviously, we're going to start on the exhaust. I could already hear some people trying to understand how do you spell uh in the comments, so I'll explain the reason why. So we need two cans of this to do the three mounts. And given the price of chock fast, we, um, Jess and I had to sit down and have a, a serious conversation about who's going to sell a kidney so that we can afford to buy the second can. Um, so that's been done. Uh, I've got one kidney now and we have a second can of Shock Fast on its way. It'll be here in a week, I guess. A lovely six inch stainless exhaust. It doesn't fit the new engine, so we need to make a couple of mods so that the new turbo lines up with the old pipe. 
While that's happening, Jess is up here getting these laser mounts glass. The anatomy of this exhaust, this is where it bolts to the existing exhaust that's in the engine room at the back end of the engine room. Comes along the roof and then drops down through a flexi joint and onto the original turbo. The original turbo used to face the back end of the boat, so it would bolt on here and basically fire exhaust towards the back. However, the new turbo is the other way around, so we have to do a complete 180 with this setup here. And the new turbo sits quite a bit higher than the old turbo, so we might be compromised on how much room we've got between the top of the turbo and the roof. We may have to do some interesting geometry with the pipe to get it to fit. You can see there's a few stains and bits of rust and obviously a bit of something, probably rust kill or something fell down on it there so it's pretty discoloured. So first things first, let's give it a clean before we start chopping it apart. So I'm just using some 600 grit emery cloth just to basically give it a buzz over. A little bit of um, air compressor oil on there. If you're wondering what that liquid stuff is, just helps the tape last a bit longer carries away some of the crap out of the grit. Give it a bit of clean off with uh, dishwashing liquid just to get the oil off so it's not disgusting when we're trying to work on it. Right, what the? So it's been under the boat for about a year so we're just giving it a bit of a raz up so we can modify it. Yeah, mine, mine's so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's looking a bit more lovelier, a little bit more shiny. Not that any of this matters because the whole lot's going to be wrapped up in ceramic wool. But I think deep down that's what really matters, is that underneath that stainless wool, you and I will both know there's a lovely shiny tube under there. Right, time to do some chopping before we do some fitting and I think this corner is going to cop it. I'm going to cut it here and then I'm going to cut it here because I think we'll be able to keep that piece intact if we weld this end of the flex joint to the straight and then have that curve basically coming down and then around into the turbo. So it'll go turbo, 180 degrees, flex joint and then into this length of straight. I'm not going to know until we chop it and start fitting it into the engine room though. Down the back of the boat thought I'll show you the stainless pile. We were at the scrappy the other day and we saw a couple of lengths of 6 inch 316 stainless tube. They're making a new water treatment plant and there was a whole bunch of this tube in the scrapyard so we grabbed a couple of lengths of that so that we've got uh, extra if we need to add in some straight. We also found this, this is a while ago, we found this curve here which is going to become the very top of the exhaust so um, so we can show it here sits like that on the roof so basically that allows us to stop water going down the exhaust and any that does get down the exhaust gets caught in the s-bend right underneath the stack and then stripping the old gasket off just using a sharp chisel and a wire brush. Bing. Turbo. Let's 
like worst Christmas unwrapping ever. What are you doing there? Uh, he's got aluminium tape on it to stop any rubbish going in it while he's transporting it or whatever. So I just got to get all of that off. Believe it or not, this is not actually a gasket. And it's a bit sort of stuck on. But it works a treat. All right. You can't see anything. <laughs> it's just a dark hole. There we go. First part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. Flames <laughs> straight out. Bop! Let's put the rest of it. It fits, but it's too close to the roof. It's going to get too hot, so we have to do something about that. But if you if you drop that down here, yeah. So how much space do we need? Uh, I don't know. Probably probably similar to that one there. So like mm -hmm. 150 mil, I'd say. Maybe. Yeah, the rib's 75, so it's about double that. So 150. Yeah. But I reckon when we cut that down and lose a bit of that straight bit there, we should. We can gain it. Yeah, part of the issue is the engine's on an angle, so it's tilting it up, yeah. which is kind of throwing it a bit. Um, right now, if we would extend that all the way down, we would hit the ground anyway. Yeah, at some point, so yeah, yeah. We have to adjust that anyway. Yeah, I wonder if we should bring that one forward um, mm -hmm. to give us, because it'll give us. This one here, straight there. Yeah, it'll give us the, the other end line. Oh, the bolts are downstairs. Do you want me to get them? Where are they? They're on the workbench. Actually, I've got to buff them. I'll just go down and buff them all and bring them up. Okay. Just hold it up for now, maybe. Yep. It should slot into it. There you go. Yeah. All right, we'll get the bolts when it's threaded. So, new exhaust gasket for the flange. Cutting it out with these awesome snipper things that were donated by David Dowling. Um, they work fantastic on this type of stuff. They just cut through it like regular old scissors, even though this stuff is metal impregnated gasket material. You can see how much metal is actually in this. It's mostly aluminium or metal of some sort. Yeah. Smash those out. Okay, this should be good. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be tight, but yeah. I think we'd probably just have to do it, eh? Yeah. So what we what we're thinking, right? We've got to do a U bend here, and it's as tight as we can get. But we've got to um, we can we push this up a bit higher, but we've got to keep the height to the roof as low as possible um, because heat obviously will go through the floor, and we don't want the floor getting red hot. And this is the hottest part of the exhaust. So what the plan is is the rest of the exhaust sits about 120 mil away from the roof about get, that high yeah about where his fingers are if you can see those so we're gonna we're gonna pretty much lift this up to be roughly the same so it matches the rest of the exhaust all the way through um and then cut this angle here to suit so the angle's not going to be a perfect 180 it's going to have a very slight kink in it to to get it to go around that corner but the alternative is we do the full 180 bend with no kink and it'll be a mandrel bend and all that sort of stuff but to do that we have to lay the exhaust right over and go way over the other side and come back again which introduces a whole bunch more complication a whole bunch more complication into the exhaust design we don't have the bends to be able to do that and we have to then redesign all the water system because it impinges on all the water system over here um, behind the exhaust so the hottest part of the exhaust would be sort of laid over top of all the water pipes which becomes a real nightmare in itself so 
Um, the other alternative is maybe bringing the exhaust down, but then that gets complicated as well because you've got oil filters and turbo return lines, starter motor electrics, etc., underneath here. So um, we think that this is probably going to be the best compromise is to swing it up and over like that. Let's going to cut it and see how far out we are. A piece of wood clamped to the top of the original exhaust. The original exhaust is bolted with a gasket to the flange. That's supporting the top of the flex joint, which is also supporting the very front joint here that we need to tack together. So we're going to tack it in place where it is right now, and then we'll take everything off and we'll weld it out on the bench. But we're out of time, so that's happening next week, along with some sort of weird cleaning ritual. Installing of a starter motor. We'll put a steering pump on the engine. We do some more exhausting work, and baby cat goes globe trotting.